Hello there and welcome to today's build. We're going to be building the Arm Hobbies Hawker Hurricane uh, Mark 2C Troop in a rapid video build style. Now this is a cracking kit, a little bit expensive maybe, but it fits so beautifully. Surface detail is absolutely amazing as you can see from all these raised and recessed rivets. Cockpit detail is absolutely great as well. Um, might seem a bit thick when cutting it off of the sprue. There is a bit of sanding to do with this one as well, even on the surface detail, but you know, it does fit so so well. Um, was messing about with our Azure Blue here. I did finally go for AK Interactive's Azure Blue. Um, after doing a bit of testing it does need lightening down, but we'll we'll get to that in the spray stage um, The gluing as always we just use good old um, Tamiya extra thin cement um, And I'm just showing you here how well this fits everything about it is so precise It is probably one of the best fits out there I've ever done when it comes to bringing a fuselage and a wing section together um, just using some, they are expensive um, pliers just here, some cutters, but for these kind of small pieces, I mean, in, you know how it is when you're trying to like sand and cut off little bits off tiny bits, um, they at least get it all cut off. Um, we're kind of just now going to be getting at this azure blue, um, mixing up in, in our colour cup just here to get a bit of spraying going in because you've got to do a little bit on the inside with the cockpit and the, the wheel wells and stuff before you kind of seal that all up. Um, just masking up here for uh, just to eliminate any sort of overspray we're going to get with our X11 to spray up the cockpit. Now the cockpit, um, I was keeping quite basic with this one, some basic weathering, break, basic spraying just so as I could because I was going to close it up, close the canopy. Um, just to sort of kind of move this build along and you know sometimes you don't want to mess about too much with a cockpit. Uh, good old XF71, nice cool um, interior green there after a bit of masking um, just to get the colours just just right. Really easy again to do. Now for the weathering I'm going to mix these two Games Workshop um, washes together both their gloss and matte version. It just makes when you mix them 50-50, it allows everything to flow, flow so much nicer into all those recesses uh, and kind of keeps a lot of it off of the um, surface areas. Uh, just cut up the decals here just to make it a little bit easier to apply. Um, sewing needle in a, a pin vise here just to kind of maneuver that just precisely. Micro salt on top and you just kind of keep on applying that micro salt until it conforms beautifully to our instrument display panel there. Bit of gloss with Mr. Colour Thinners. Right, oh, sorry, sorry, the um, not gloss, but some matte just to mattify everything up. And then some good old Gazooka Uzi agent just to kind of um, pin those instrument display dials just to make them all look nice and glossy um, on that matte background that we've just made. Moving along with just simply kind of building this together now, gluing, pegging it down, using F clamps, right? And it's it's such an easy it's easy build in the sense of how it, well it goes together. There's no real com uh, comments on bad fits or anything like that. Um, it, it it was such a beautiful build to put to, together. Just did a bit of um, natural metal finish work just on our air intakes here and using that wash again. Again, a bit more showing off of how well this just slots together, you know. That little bit of a push and it was such a perfect fit. A uh, little bit of filling here. This was probably me actually when I was like cutting all of this off of the sprue. I probably like maybe cut a little bit too deep and made those little gaps where um, cutting off the sprue. Mr. Surfer just to whack that on top as well just to try and sort of eliminate as much gapage as possible. Well as you can see a um, little bit of gapage going on there after it dries. So coming in with the, the, the thinner grade to just kind of finish off those little gaps. We're going to put some um, clear parts just there, right, which is why I'm kind of filling that in as well, which you might normally forget. So try not to forget with this kit, 
sanding away with good 240 grit sanding uh, sanding stick there did forget to kind of actually uh, cover up with some masking tape our detail there just to stop us from sanding that away and I'm just gonna get our seam lines all nice and seamless with some black paint we can just double check and make sure that you know where we are with our filling and gapage on there the black paint will indicate if you're rotating in the, in the light any gaps lightly sand that away with a fine sanding stick and it will indicate even more what kind of gaps we've still got left um, on our, our join line just there which I do believe I'm going to show you in a sec yeah there you go you can just see the paints left behind showing that there's still a bit of a, um, a gapage going on um, just doing our leading edges here using a razor saw hopefully you can see how I'm rotating the model rather than moving the tool itself um, and you really do kind of need to do it with these hurricanes because they've got such a shall we say a fat leading edge there's quite a bit of recess going on there finalizing our gap filling here with some 1500 black boy uh, Mr. Hobby with their surface stuff really really good um, filler there now because I'm going to close my canopy there's this little bit of surface detail that just needs to be sprayed our main color here our dark earth as you can see just that little area there needs to be covered up and then we can apply our canopy with some good old micro crystal clear because it's a nice safe glue to use and then we can lay that on and wipe up any sort of oozed out excess bits um, moving into a bit of prep work here just kind of getting cocktail sticks on pieces ready to have things hand free for spraying some final sort of gap filling here with the plastic putty technique it's great it's just apply and wipe and you fill the gap gonna now cut up a bit of foam right because we've got this gap at the back of the, the, the canopy just here as you can see this kit is amazing but the canopy if you want to close it a mm, little bit of issues going on there so yes I'm kind of filling in that with a fine bit of foam and then we're going to spray it black so as what we see um, on the inside will be black right we're going to now move into the spray stage move into some pre-shading so we're just now um, pre-shading all our panel lines so as when we put our main coat on top the black will show through and give us a nice bit of weathering right I'm kind of on a 50 50 with the paint mixture here um, PSI is like maybe 18 PSI and it's just kind of really about getting your biting point and just kind of keep your airbrush moving any flat spots I like to just squiggle some mottling effect just to give a bit of interest to those flatter areas now coming to our RAF Azure Blue by AK Interactive as I say this was a bit too dark but we'll um, we'll tackle that in a bit um, basic put down a, um, a light misty coat and then put about two coats of a normal coat on there so it kind of looks wet and you've just got that pre-shading just showing through now just to control it I'm adding more thinners so as we can have this thinner more transparent so as we can control how much we kill off our pre-shading so we don't end up eliminating it and just having a flat color we still got that black coming through um, we're now going to add some white to do some bleaching right this is where we take the inside of the panel lines and we just kind of fade them a lighter color just to add another layer of weathering right um, you've got to be kind of careful again practice your biting point with this um, and just kind of get inside those panel lines as you can see and it just bleaches it like it's been out in the sun and that kind of thing but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to blast the whole model with this um, <coughs> 
lighten down color of azure blue just to actually lighten the whole thing as i say the color was a bit too dark for my liking now we move on to the masking a little bit of um jammy dog tape there to go around curves i don't normally mask up over leading edges but as i say the hurricanes they're quite fat around their leading edges so i do mask them up our main color on top we've got our xf60 and uh, just making sure that we're all nicely tightly down so we don't get any overspray and i just i personally just spray the whole model like as you can see um, rather than sort of like following some sort of camo pattern I find it's just quicker and faster just to do the whole model and um, the first top layer I also use do the lighter color first and then the darker on top as you can see we're just bleaching away like we did on the underside and there we have it so now we can move along with um, doing our masking or well actually no sorry I do forget you want to gloss because Tamiya paints are a little bit delicate so I do do a light glossing of the whole model when it comes to Tamiya paints before I kind of come along with as you can see some Panzer Putty uh, just to stop any scratches in that happening this stuff's pretty cool I mean you want to use you want to spray the same day you kind of put this down because it just droops and droops and droops until it comes to nothing just using like anything pencils to um, uh, brushes and stuff to kind of shape it and then we put in our main color of XA1002 by extra acrylics down and then we've got the satisfying part of removing um, all our masking putty just on here and showing all this lovely work however I mean you're probably gonna find the odd little bit here and there that maybe doesn't kind of look right so as you can see i'm turning this kind of pointy bit of a camo pattern here into something a bit more rounded by going free hand and removing the rest of the masking tape and then to be honest i do find another bit that i kind of thought was a bit thin and needed to be a bit fatter so you know reapplying the whole panzer putty and a bit of masking tape and again spraying on top of that Now we move into the Declan stage, although I did forget, and we will come to this later, but I did forget to do um, post shading, but here we go, straight into the Declan, um, you know, putting that micro set underneath, micro set on top, right, and you leave that for a couple of minutes and just roll out any moisture and air that's underneath the decal. Right, these decals seemed a bit brittle, and the recess, sorry, the raised rivets seemed to be a bit, bit spiky, and they're kind of like made little marks which i took care of with a bit of blue paint as you can see those little marks but they kind of almost look like some nice chipping so you might want to keep it but anyway we moved along with a bit of a uh, micro sole and as you can see it wrinkles up the decal a bit um, you might find the odd little bubble as it kind of dries and you just want to kind of stab them to release the air so you can apply more micro sole to um, make this conform way way better to the model as if it looks as if it's painted on slightly aggravating it before it gets too sort of wet shall we say where it kind of gets all um, wrinkly just to help it get down again once it dries again we can carve out the recess uh, panel lines and apply some more micro salt and you should end up with something that just looks sprayed on and is just well conformed to the model as you can see Right, bit of XF1, uh, XF52. Right, needed to open this up, by the way. Um, and we're going to have a really thin down mixture here, something like 90% thinners to paint. And we've, we're taking that kind of um, brown colour, the dark earth colour, and making it darker and dirtier to do our um, post shading. Now, the key here is is getting that biting point, that point in which you pull back the trigger and the paint just comes out. You want to hold that. And as you're holding it, you want to keep moving across the model, trying not to stop and just 
um, randomly kind of like spray things in. If you kind of stay in one place for too long, you get that, you get spider in. Um, and as I say, just keep moving, right? Uh, keep it random. You can go over more than one panel line or just miss a panel line, right? We can make areas darker, right? As you can see, just kind of like adds a bit of flavor, the odd little area being darker. Um, because I did do the decals before post shading, yes, I'm kind of just wiping things up a little bit here and just kind of make it look kind of nice and dirty to be fair. So it might be something, uh, a bit of an accident that maybe you do more in the future. Anyway, some really nice weathering pastels here by uh, Mr. Hobby. Mixing our two colours that we have here to make a dark, dirty looking colour just to kind of fill in all our recess panel lines. Adding some water to make it kind of a milky consistency with a drop of washing up liquid to help it sort of flow across the model and get into all those um, nooks and crannies. And you just simply paint this on, leave it to dry for about half an hour. I personally like to add a second coat just to make sure it goes into all those recessed panel lines and recessed rivets. And then we can wipe it away with a kitchen paper towel, right? Um, I kind of do one blast across it and then I'll sort of do another blast across the model but really trying to go in the direction of flow so if you do miss a bit at least it's going to be a, a streak or something like that. Using cotton wool buds, using brushes to get into those hard to reach places right just to neaten everything off. Uh, doing some final painting here um, just some um, thin down using homebrew thinners and XF85 and you know what you can just touch the edges and it literally paints wheels for you um, masking up for our propellers here to get our little yellow tips on right if you you fold it perfectly you can get both sides to be matching quite nicely so um, folding them up nice gives you um, some nice tips always always spray white on first right if you spray yellow onto black you're gonna have to do about 10 coats to, to build it up so always white first and there we have it our tips are all nicely done bit of chipping here with some um, ledge belt lead belcher by citadel just dab that on it gives you these micro little scratches um, do it on the propellers as well because they just look cool and um, you can use paintbrushes as well to kind of make bigger um, chips and you can also make some nice cool scratches as well. Some Mr. Weathering Liner here by Mr. Hobby. Uh, these are cool because they don't use thinners so it's a bit sort of quick and easy. You kind of just draw it on and then you rub it away with a um, cotton wool bud just to make a nice feathered sort of streak and then you can also make sharper ones and again rub out it again just to feather it in a bit and you can get all sorts of cool sort of streaky feathered sharp streaks or um, broader streaks um, going on with just using the Mr. Weathering liner. Then we have the Tamiya Weathering Master Sets as well. Um, these are good for doing big, broad, sort of streaky, oily uh, streak effects. I do like to use a cotton wool bud rather than what they give you in those little um, pots they kind of put their um, powders in. Um, coming back to the Mr. Hobby pigments here, we're just kind of dabbing this all down. Do try and go a little bit more than you'd rather weather it because when you put a matte coat on it does kill a lot of the pigments off which you will see in a bit when I kind of end up having to put like more than one application of pigments down. Uh, but first off, one drop of um, some black, really thin down, 90, 95% thinners to paint just to do a final post shading of black just to kind of like you know weather up those decals um things like exhaust ailerons flaps and stuff to kind of just bring them out that little bit more in the weathered sort of look all right now it's time for the matte coat probably one of my favorite parts of building a model because this kind of brings everything together it kind of mattifies everything brings the weathering out and um just kind of starts making the model look like what's going to look 
when you're done again as you can see coming back with some more pigments because the matte coat kind of kills a lot of your pigments off And now we can finally remove our masking tape. Just being nice and careful. Clean these up with a bit of a cotton wool bud just to get rid of any sort of washes that might have got underneath here or overspray. I do tend to come in with a cotton, sorry, a cocktail stick just to scratch away any overspray as you can see here. Cotton wool bud and that clears that up. Now hopefully you've enjoyed this quick rapid video build of building this hurricane. If you want to see more, please go check out the Genesis Models website. We have loads and loads of step-by-step -step videos teaching you everything about building scale models as well as much, much more. So hopefully you've enjoyed this and hopefully you look forward to the next one that comes along. Um, but as always, until next time, my name is Bobby Waldron, this is Genesis Models, and I'll catch you in the next build.